got from the Dollar Tree. It's five by seven. I really like the way this look. I might change it. I don't know. I'm going to decide as I go along with the project. All right. The first thing I want to do is flip the frame over because I'm going to be removing the easel and the little piece of paper. And to do that, I have to remove these little metal tabs. You see them there? That holds everything in and we're not gonna need them. So I'm gonna take my plier and I'm just going to pull those little tabs out. And I'm not really strong, so if I could do it, you could do it too. And you're just going to put them aside and once those are all out, now we can remove the things behind the glass, which is the easel and the piece of paper. The next thing I'm going to do is very, very carefully remove the glass and put that aside. The next step I'm going to leave in, even though I had a lot of problems, I want you to see what happens. I'm using E6000, which is a very, very strong glue to hold the glass back into the frame. Now, I bought these little tips because I thought, you know, the big, tube it comes out in one big glob look how wide that is and i thought see i thought if i put the little cap on that one there that this would definitely give me a nice thin bead to go around the inside of the frame okay so those little tips are they have to cut them to open them up and they're kind of hard to do but i managed to do that so now i want to start to put it around the frame and what i'm finding is look it's not staying on. So there I got challenge number one. When here comes challenge number two, I'm trying to squeeze it out and it's not coming out. And I'm trying to figure out what is going wrong with this. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, maybe I need to do a bigger cut. So I cut it bigger, but then I had a problem with that. And you're going to see, I start to do it and it's kind of like the same thing. So I'm holding on to the cap as I'm trying to squeeze it. And I'm still having kind of a hard time with it because I'm holding on to the cap and I'm trying to squeeze. But eventually I did get it going. See how nice and thin that bead is. That's what I was looking for. I don't want it squeezing out underneath the glass. So I did get it going, but I'm going to tell you the next time I do this, I do a project where I want a very thin bead. I'm going to go ahead and buy the smaller E6000 tubes. I think they would just be a lot easier. All right. You want to carefully take that cap off and make sure you wipe the threads as well, because these caps can actually get stuck to the tubes. Now I'm going to be very careful and put the glass back into the frame. And remember, this is the back of the frame. And then I'm going to press down and make sure that all of the sides are well adhered. Now, E6000 takes between oh, 24 and 48 hours to cure, but you should wait just a few hours, make sure that the glue is set up, and then you can move on to the next step. I'm using an alcohol wipe to clean down the glass and I am using the front. The alcohol is going to give me a nice squeaky clean. Now I'm not doing the back because I'm going to be using stickers and if I stick them on the back, you're not going to be able to see the beautiful butterflies. And you know what? The way I do this project, it's going to work absolutely fine to put them on the front and they're very, very pretty. So now we're going to start with the lettering. And you can see I kind of laid it out and this is what I'm going to do to trace the letter. And I'm going to use dimensional paint. This is black slick by Tulip. This worked really well. And that's what I'm going to use to trace the letter. Because remember, I kind of want to make this to look like um, hand lettering. All right. So I went ahead and cut the words apart just a little bit. They were a little bit too close for me. And then I didn't want the paper moving around. So I taped it with some painter's tape and that's temporary. It's easy to get that tape off. All right. So I want to give you some tips now. And one of them is again, to try to get an idea of where the little butterflies are going to go. And look at this. I put them on another frame. They're not stuck down, but just kind of give me an idea of how much room I have. Now, I had some problems and I, again, I couldn't do the black paint right on top of the piece of paper like that. It just didn't work out. Trust me when I tell you this. Instead, I traced the letters first with a black Sharpie. Now, this is like an extra step, but when I tell you to believe me, it was a much easier time to do it like this, to trace with the Sharpie and to go over the Sharpie with the paint than to do it the other way. Okay, now after it's all done, I just want to give it some time to dry. 
The Sharpie is dry and now I can remove the lettering from the back. Comes off easy with the painter's tape and I'm ready to trace it with the black paint. Now, I wanna give you a tip. This is a very big tip. Squeeze a little bit out onto a paper towel. Make sure that it's not clogged because if it's clogged and you go to trace the letter, you might get one big glob coming out first. All right, so just a little tip. I'm going to now trace the letters and of course I'm tracing now on top of the Sharpie and the Sharpie is permanent so I don't really have to worry about it smudging or moving but I am going to take the Sharpie off later and I'm going to show you how I do that. All right so I'm just about done with the letter B and let's take a look. It's really pretty. I love it and can't you see it really has that hand lettering look to it. It doesn't look perfect and that's what I was going for. I wanted this to look like a hand lettered sign. So another tip is to keep even pressure as you're squeezing the bottle to make sure that all of the lines are consistent. Alrighty, there we go. Let's take a look. I think it looks really, really nice. And I like the black, nice and dark. Okay, let's give that some time to dry. While that's drying, I have a bonus project for you. Yes, I'm going to show you two different textures using matte Mod Podge and glossy Mod Podge. And I'm doing this on clear glass. So I'm gonna start with the matte. And I'm gonna do that up on the top. I'm not gonna swirl this around with my fingers. Instead, I'm just gonna spread it out with the brush, just like this. And I just want to make sure I have the, all, the whole thing covered. All right. Once all the glass is covered, now watch this. I'm going to start to drag my brush down and see how I'm doing one next to the other. And I'm making these stripes. So I'm going to do this all the way across. They're pretty consistent. Not bad, right? <laughs> now watch this. I'm going to start to go across and I'm doing what might be called a checkerboard or a basket weave. It depends, but I'll tell you, when I was doing this, it reminded me of a very popular designer. Okay, take a look. Wait till you see how it looks when it's dry. It's just a really nice texture to put onto your projects. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the bottom. And on the bottom, I'm going to be using glossy. Okay. This time I'm using a brush that's used for um, stenciling. It's a very stiff bristled brush and I'm just kind of tapping it around. And as I tap, I'm getting this really nice texture. I wanna hold it up so you can see it, all right? So it's different than the swirl, it's different than the basket weave, and I'm sure there are a lot of applications we're gonna find for this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of it, and when I'm done, I wanna hold it up so you can see, because there's another little thing going on in there, and that's with these really, really cute bubbles. I'm thinking maybe something nautical, I don't know. All right, let's let that dry, and while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our project. Oh, I love that. I hope you give that a try too. All right, the lettering is dry, but I have another tip for you is when I was finished, I saw there was some spaces in the lettering. You see there were the black paint mixed. Well, this was an easy fix. I just flipped it over. I got my Sharpie marker. Remember, do this on the back. Don't do this on the front. And I just filled in all of those little spaces that I could find and I'm gonna turn it over so you can see that now all of the lettering is solid and filled in. Now, having said that, I'm gonna really throw a curveball at you because I wanna make sure the Sharpie on the front that I used when I traced it is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and take an alcohol pad and that really helped. And it's going to remove any of the black Sharpie that might be there, might not be, but I don't wanna take a chance and start swirling the glue and have it come off. See, there's all that black Sharpie. Now we're ready to put the little butterflies on. And I love these stickers. They have a clear backing and they're printed on clear plastic, which means you're not going to see the edges like you would if they were printed on white paper. You know, some stickers have that white edge that goes all the way around. Well, this is much less noticeable because it's printed on clear plastic. And here's my tip. Okay, I put them on another frame. They're not stuck down. They're just giving me an idea of where they're going to go. I love these stickers. I have a great Amazon link for you to get them. I checked out a bunch, so these were really good. And I so appreciate when you use my links. It's very helpful when I'm doing my videos. All right, so as you can see, we're really coming along. And I think I have one more there. And we're gonna put it down. These are really quality stickers. I have to tell you, they're very, very nice. And that's pretty. Let me hold it up. Oh, I really like how that looks with the Be The Sunshine. 
After I was done, I decided it needed a little something extra. So I went and added these little florals. Take a look at that. It's not a lot, just a nice little touch. And I want to show you what I used. I got these also from Amazon. I have the link below. You get a ton of them. They come in all different colors, all types of flowers. Really was a nice touch. Good touch for other projects too. Okay, now on to the Mod Podge swirl. And I'm using gloss. I'm going to take it and I'm going to squirt it right on top of the glass and you can see I'm going on top of the lettering I'm going on top of the stickers and it works and it makes a beautiful piece of wall art now I'm going to take my fingers and I'm just going to start to swirl like this I love this I love this maybe it brings me back to my childhood I don't know but I love this and this is even prettier in person once it's dry I put these all over my house in fact I post a lot of these on my Facebook page so make sure you go there and like and follow me and you can see the other projects that I do all right, let's let that dry. And this is the finished sign. Look at all of that gloss. Look at those beautiful butterflies. I love how this came out in a window. It looks absolutely beautiful. Here's my bonus project. At the top, I used the matte Mod Podge. I did the basket weave. And then on the bottom, I used the gloss. But there I tapped with my bristle brush. And you know, these are both kind of opaque. So I'm thinking if you have a big enough window to do this on, you could put it in front of another window for privacy. All right, thank you so much for watching. And I hope that you're going to give this a try and leave me a comment.